I've spent my career getting to the bottom of why America's promise works for some families, but others who work just as hard slip through the cracks into disaster. And what I've found is terrifying. These aren't cracks that families are falling into, they're traps. America's middle class is under attack. Elizabeth Warren becoming the first high profile Democrat to take an official step toward running for president in 2020. The Massachusetts Senator announcing today she is forming an exploratory committee. I'm joined now by Jason Nichols, a Democratic political analyst, and Nan Hayworth, a member of the Independent Women's Forum Board of Directors and former New York Congresswoman. Thank you very much for talking to us. So, all right, uh, Nan, I'm going to start with you. Um, Elizabeth Warren has not only formed an exploratory run, Okay, uh, for 2020, she's actually released a fundraising email, uh, and I have part of it, and I'm going to read it to you. It says, I've spent my career standing up to big banks and powerful corporations, and I didn't stop when I got to the United States Senate. I didn't have, I don't have binders full of bankers and CEOs to call for ginormous checks to launch this committee. In fact, most of them aren't going to like what I'm doing in such a crowded field, I have to ask you, of contenders. Where does Warren stand, do you believe? Well, you know, clearly Elizabeth Warren has uh, made a, a name for herself among Democrats and progressives as a crusader uh, against uh, abuses by the financial services industry. But let's be honest here. Uh, it's the cozy relationship between big industries of any sort, including financial services, and regulators uh, that actually led to a lot of the problems that we saw, including the 2008 crash. Uh, so, Julie, uh, if Elizabeth Warren really wants to be a champion for the American people, she'd follow the lead that President Trump's taken, deregulate, cut taxes. And unfortunately, among the Democratic field, even though they claim to be diverse, they're pretty much uniform and monolithic in wanting to give government more control. And that's going to mean more burdens for the middle class, not less. People are doing better now under President Trump. They're going back to work. They've got more money in their pockets. They've got lower taxes and higher wages. Uh, uh, Elizabeth Warren should be right behind President Trump. Jason, uh, in an interview with the Boston Globe earlier this year, Warren said that she never thought uh, she was going to be in public office. She said, my whole life, I never thought that I was going to be a public school teacher. And then I became a professor. Pretty amazing for the daughter of a janitor. Um, so she comes from a different kind of blue blood background. Um, a lot of the Trump supporters are from blue blood backgrounds, despite the fact that he is an elite. I'm wondering how she will appeal to the anti-elite. Well, you know, a lot of things actually in, in terms of that haven't really made sense. Like you said, uh, President Trump is a New York socialite who wouldn't have been caught dead in Mississippi or Alabama before uh, he ran for president. But now you have Elizabeth Warren, who actually does come from a working class background. But she may have a difficult time because she is viewed as, as an intellectual elite, someone who uh, taught at Harvard University. Um, so I think she may not be able to, uh, to connect with certain parts of the country. I think what is gonna connect are her ideas about Medicare for all. We know that so many people in this country go broke trying to pay for uh, medical expenses and medical bills and lose their homes and lose their farms. I think if she sticks to the issues, not just about her personal image, she will connect with working class voters. Did her DNA test results? Um, I mean, she didn't bring that up. Uh, Nan, do you think that's gonna hurt her at all or do you think people have buried the hatchet there? I, I, you know, Julie, it, it's certainly in a very competitive Democratic field, you know it's going to come up, and rightly so. It's absolutely ridiculous to claim Native American ancestry when, in fact, you have less Native American DNA than the average, uh, you know, the European uh, descendant in this country. I mean, that's just, that's just crazy. But again, you know, Julie, the, the Democrats are so focused on things we can't change. Our identity, the whole idea of being American is that we get beyond ethnicity, gender, the zip code we grew up in. Uh, and that's been the miracle of President Trump, of course. He has actually helped the American people, the American worker, and the American taxpayer, and the American uh, middle class person just trying to get by. He's actually made things better for them. There's a reason, because if you empower government, which is what every Democrat wants to do, including Elizabeth Warren, if you empower government, you will get more access for the elites, more access for them and less for everyone else. More cost of living. Medicare for all would be a disaster. Why? Because when the government controls things, then only the people who have access to government as special contractors. Big insurers have done fine under Obamacare. Uh, right. Average Americans have not.
All right. I want to talk about the not average American, um, the rich and obviously those who are running for office. Uh, there are some other 2020 contenders, Michael Bloomberg, for example. Um, he had a net worth of somewhere around fifty one point eight billion dollars, making him the eighth richest person in the United States and the 11th richest person in the world. Um, here in New York City, we all know Michael Bloomberg. Many people really love Michael Bloomberg. The question is whether on a national stage stage. He's known enough. Um, here, I want you to play a little bit of Bloomberg and react to him on NBC Meet the Press on Sunday. Listen. I think the public is tired of listening to the same platitudes that they get. Mm -hmm. We're in favor of God, mother and apple pie. Timeline is beginning of the year, end of January, into February, maybe. Mm -hmm. um, there's no rush to do it. Uh, everybody wants to know what you're going to do. And I, the bottom line is, I'm not sure yet. Jason? Well, I think Mike Bloomberg uh, has some issues with the Democratic base. I think that he's viewed as, as a pro-business, pro-Wall Street uh, centrist in, in a time when the Democratic base doesn't really want that. And he also has issues with stop and frisk, which was overtly racist. And, you know, we have the, the core of the Democratic Party will always be or has always been African-American women. All right. And they're not going to support that. So I think he's going to struggle there uh, to catch on with a lot of Democratic Nan, quick, voters. Nan, quick final word. Democratic identity politics are obviously running against uh, Mr. Bloomberg, who's a white male. He's a very smart, very talented man with a lot of money. I think he could definitely right. uh, make a big we splash go. in the Democratic primary. All right. Yeah, the Democratic um, lineup so far not looking extremely diverse either. So uh, they got to switch things up, maybe. Uh, both of you, thank you, Jason and Ann. Thank you. We'll be right Thanks, back. Thanks, Julie. Thanks. Happy New Year. Happy New Year.